coming up. I consider Tim to be one of those applied genetics geniuses. When a lot of the industry went that way, Oldie went that way. Now he's being recognized more than ever that he's on the right track. Replacement heifers is where the Oldie program really shined. Hear the fascinating story of the most unique low input genetic program in the industry next on The American Rancher. Hello and welcome to The American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. On today's show, we're at Oldie Cattle Company in Palmer, Kansas. Longtime breeder Tim Oldie tells the fascinating story of how he developed what is known to be the lowest input beef cattle genetics in the industry. Oldie cattle thrive in harsh climates and on land with limited grazing capacity. Oldie Angus cattle have the ability to fatten on grass, which is attractive to many operations, including all natural, NHTC, and grass-fed programs. Oldie Angus cattle are in high demand by ranchers across the country. But Oldie's success didn't come easy. Tim's lifelong commitment to create low-input cattle didn't always line up with the industry's expectations. Well, I've always had a terrific passion for animals. Decided to go to pre-vet at Kansas State. And then about my uh, into my sophomore year, I was approached by a couple gentlemen to go into importing livestock from Europe, and we want you to work for us. They ended up making me a full one-third partner and a wage that was way more than a veterinary was making at the time. So it was hard to turn down. You know, I'm 20 years old and going to get to go to Europe and, you know, something you dream about. So I went to Europe, went to Austria and Germany and Ireland and uh, bought cattle and picked cattle in different places. And, and in the 70s, bigger was better. They wanted them big and tall, and I didn't like them. I wanted them thick and deep. And so when I got to Germany and, uh, you know, and the Germans, and I'm German, so I'm prejudiced. They said, no, you want some guts. You want some meat. You Americans are breeding them narrow, tall things. They won't work on grass. You know, you're going to have to give them grain. And, and I'm going, man, you're right. I agree. And, and so when I started seeing all the data, you know, actual economic data, not BS data. Those cattle worked. They, the cows gave the milk, they had the meat, you know, and they had, oh, them old fleck feed cattle had muscle and, and free, you know, they were incredible. So I said, it can work. The fleck fee that Tim discovered had the ability to develop only on grass. They also had other traits that he didn't expect. He was surprised by how many traits some European breeders were tracking. They had 40 traits analyzed, 40, not growth weaning in yearling, 40, you know, front udder attachment, rear udder attachment, teat length, teat placement, hoof length, hoof width of, you know, shoulder, width of hip, I mean, and, and carcass ability on a grass regime, 40 traits. Well, you know, all you had to do is find them old big stud bulls that were 10 years old that had five, 6,000 daughters in this system, they were foolproof. They were foolproof. Tim set out to import Fleckvie and other genetics to serve as the foundation of his herd. Each breed was selected for excellent udders, structure, birth weight, and of course, their knack for performance on grass. But it was complicated. We couldn't bring them in directly, but we figured out a way to import them to Ireland and then the next generation of calves born in Ireland could be tested and flown in and put into quarantine in American quarantine station for 60 days and then be brought in. But we did it. And through my travels when I was with Beef Genetics Research, we did a lot of progeny testing of our breeds. And so I traveled through Montana and the Dakotas there in the 70s and there was some big Angus test herds for ABS predominantly. So there were some phenomenal herds of maybe six, eight hundred, a thousand Angus cows that were thick and deep and wide, and they were AI into the old good bulls. And I just, my mouth just drooled. Tim makes a deal to cross some of those cattle he imported from Europe. 
The results are the original F1 females he needed to develop his low input herd. I said, you know, I'm gonna make these, these Angus too if that's the last thing I do. Coming up. I had what I wanted, but I didn't know how to propagate it. Tim Oldie's quest to develop high performance, low input cattle hits a snag. See what happens after the break. You're watching The American Rancher. Welcome back to The American Rancher. Tim Oldie's development of low input cattle prompts him to import Fleckfee and other genetics from Europe in the 1970s. These genetics have the key traits he needed for his vision to succeed. Tim crosses these genetics with just the right Angus females to create the F1 female he's always had in mind. Now, one final obstacle stands in his way. We were struggling, we bought those cows. I had what I wanted, but I didn't know how to propagate it. I, there was not an Angus bull out there that would duplicate them. I tried some things and I'm going, nah. Then 86, 6807 was born. And a good friend, he was actually her for breeder, and he said, Tim, them 6807s, you'll love them. They're thick, they're stout, they're pretty. Nice uttered, and I said, really, yeah. So I went out and looked at some and proceeded to buy a third interest in the bull. My share, the one third, I took it in semen rather than money, and we stockpiled it. And he didn't live along. He had an abscess foot that had got hurt in a pasture. So, but he was our foundation bull. Now he wasn't perfect. I mean, he had some issues, as every bull does. But he gave us the the good udders, the thickness, the low birth, the growth ratios. He actually duplicated those cows pretty well. In fact, probably made them a little better. But we needed him better yet. So we put him back like the 1019 cow was one of the original, and she lived to 22 years old. And she was a, the mother of Echelon, doctor. Uh, well, we had seven or eight sons out of her. You know, we, EXT, the Great Plains Bull. And that cow at 20 years old still had perfect feet. I mean, just like they were manicured. Perfect udder. When she dried up in the fall, that udder just like she'd never had a calf. She had teats that long, little nibbins. And so... She had that thing going, and she actually had about a 40, 50 yearling EPD today that, that a cow born in 1971 would have never, most of them were zero now today on growth, and she was so. There was some punch in that cow, and our cattle today, you know, we got some cows that will weigh 16, 1700 that are not very tall, but they're heavy, wide, and deep. So basically the German philosophy helped me feel safe in going this way. So I found those Angus cows that had that body type. 6807 had that body type. And so that pretty well set the foundation for the Angus cattle. Then we used that and we had to have that to make our hybrids. You know, you, to get good crossbreds, you gotta have good purebreds. So I had to, then I now I feel I got the right Angus. In addition to 6807, other bulls have stood the test of time, such as OCC Anchor, OCC and Blazon 854E, and OCC Paxton 730P. These bulls continue to produce females that are functional, low input, with beautiful udders, moderate size, and outstanding performance on grass. Some of these females include 628W, 827A, and 803X. To keep these powerhouse genetics intact, Oldie turned to line breeding. Well, line breeding, as we all know the joke, when it works, it's line breeding, and when, and when it don't, it's inbreeding. Line breeding is extremely important for us. I have a closed herd now. We haven't added a female, I don't think, in 15 years, or a bull. We raise all our, all the bulls are, are bred here, all the females. And I have no problem breeding full brothers, and I have a full brothers to full sisters. Twice, we've had a bull that had the mating 6807, 10, 19, eight times. It's all the same. And they were normal. And the bull we called normalizer. But, so I'm not afraid of it. We have bred them so tight and inbred them so much, if there was any defects, it would have been exposed. 
to test before DNA was here to test for defects. You, the, the way you had to do it was to breed a sire to his own daughters. So if you bred a bull to 30 of his own daughters and you got 30 normal calves, he had about a 99.8% chance of being clean of any genetic defect. You know, line breeding only brings out what's in them. It don't cause problems, but it exposes problems. My customers know that by inbreeding and, and closed breeding, you're genetically clean from defects. That wasn't the real reason I did it. I did it because I wanted to have a certain kind. I had this 1019 cow. I thought she was about as close to perfect as I had ever seen. And I said, I want a thousand like her. Well, at the time you couldn't clone them. So the only way to get her was to take her to her brothers or sister, you know what I mean? Like we have done put her in the pedigree eight or 10 times. And today, those cattle look very similar to her because we've consolidated. And what we did, we had tried some other bulls and in 98, I had some terrible back issues and we just said, we gotta cut back and had a couple little kids. And so we decided to kind of, we called it our Angus cow dispersal. And we just kept about, I think 15 heifer calves or yeah, and about 15 bred heifers. But we kept the ones that were all out of, or basically went back to those three good cows. We just kind of sold the rest of them. So today, when you really study our pedigrees, it, it, it all goes back to about three or four sires and three or four cows. Up next. We're probably running those cows for 200 bucks less just through the winter. Tim Oldy succeeds. See the results of decades of passion and commitment in the development of his high-performance, low-input cattle. That's coming up on The American Rancher. Stay with us. Welcome back to The American Rancher. Tim Oldie and his family now enjoy the fruit of decades of hard work and dedication. Oldie Cattle Company now produces low input seed stock that is proven by generations of carefully selected genetic traits. His customers confirm the performance of these cattle. Angus genetics are the focus of Oldie Cattle. Their cattle are ranked within their exclusive Basic Black program, which encompasses Flexim Angus, Angus II, and Purebred Angus. Every Basic Black is a high-performance, low-input success story. Purebreds are not, they are known probably number one is for their fleshing ability, that those cattle will stay fat on grass, and they've got good udders, and they got low birth weight. Probably the three most things that we're known for. People know if they breed our bulls, they're gonna improve some udders, and you know they're gonna have low birth, and they're gonna be easy keeping. One of the things that I think is kind of unique about Oldie is uh, he knows how to develop bulls. A lot of bulls have a tendency to fall apart when you get them to the ranch, and that's not a problem with an Oldie bull. Known Tim for a long time, probably over 35 years, and. Every time I come in contact with him, whether it's in person or over the phone or even text messages, I learned something and he's taught us a lot. I, I consider Tim to be one of those applied genetics geniuses, probably the number one person that I, that I know of in the world and how he breeds cattle and how he looks at cattle and how he can identify cattle that work. Primarily they work because of the, the fleshing ability these cattle have, but he also concentrates on some of the other traits like udder and teeth quality and conformation and feet and legs and, and all of those translate for us into cattle that are going to be around for some time. We produce our oldie cattle by buying oldie bulls and uh, we've bought oldie bulls for years and uh, we're cow people and uh, take a lot of pride and put a lot of effort into uh, making heifers that we like. We, we retain all of our females and we make all of our own cows. And so uh, they're advertised to be maternal cattle and that is exactly what they are. They're, uh, they're moderate framed, they're uh, 
easy flushing. They're structurally correct, problem-free cattle. These are our spring-born replacement heifers. These would be about uh, 10 months old, I guess, now. These would be kind of March, April heifers, born a year ago, and they're all three. There's some Angus, Angus twos, and some Fleck Sim Angus. They're about in the body condition we like. We try to have these about seven, 50 when we breed them. I don't really want them bigger than that. We used to have them a little heavier, but we'd rather just breed them a little lighter and, and then let them go to grass and gain the weight back on grass. And they usually weigh around 1,000 pounds when they calve, maybe 950 to 1,050. So we did start feeding them here two weeks ago and this snow got pretty bad and they're, I think we've fed them four times now in two weeks. So they get about, no, oh, they get half a bale, probably about 600 pounds. So they're getting about 10 or 12 pounds alfalfa hay twice a week. Replacement heifers is where the oldie program really shines, we think. Uh, it is just, uh, there are, we could do a lot of things if we use terminal sires or if we did crossbreeding, we recognize the hybrid vigor and all of that. Those are all positive things. But it is really difficult to get the kind of female you want to make a cow out of in this industry today. And that's why we, we uh, we like the oldie program so much because we like the daughters. The moderate framed, easy fleshing, problem free heifers that we can get out of an oldie bull. So these would be all registered Angus cows. Four and five year olds predominantly are their A's. These cows have probably maybe lost 30, 40 pounds since January when it got cold, but they still are, they'll start calving here in about two weeks, three weeks. And then the green grass will start about the end of March, first of April, so they'll flush right up on the green grass as they're calving. So we really don't want them any fleshier in this right now, just the body condition where it's at. And uh, they'll start calving and milking, and then they rotate into that green grass when them calves, like in April that way in May, and. It, they breed up real well. So we're probably running those cows for 200 bucks less just through the winter, because no labor, no feed. They got running water. But our cattle, because we've line bred, that 1019 cow would stay fat on nothing. These would all be two-year-old bulls, and uh, they'll be in the sale, most all of them. We gotta finish semen checking them and everything, but. Majority of these are Angus bulls. The pink tags are Angus. Uh, we AI a part of our cows, and quite a few of this pen would be some AI sired. There's Paxtons and Blazons, a little, kind of everything. You know, when it's cold, they'll eat 10 to 20% more a day. I mean, it just got to, to stay warm, and the second it warms up to 35, 40 degrees, they'll back right back off the ration. We always try to keep the best 70, 80, uh, bulls for the sale and then we sell the rest private treaty and so this this is going to be real they got the really good mothers you talk the line bread thing there's somewhere well like that bull there they'll be having 10 19 cow in their pedigree three four five times you know a couple three times 6807 probably a couple three times the xt 654x so they all they all have the same kind of pedigree it's just switched around a little bit they're good, really good set of bulls. Our cattle really thrive in low input. In other words, we've sent bulls to Matador Ranch in South Texas, West Texas, in New Mexico. We've got cattle running the Sierra Mountains in California, Nevada, and Utah, all over. And I'm not saying that's all the worst, but our cattle with droughts, and particularly right now, the calls I get is says, Tim, I can tell every one of my cattle it's your genetics through this cold weather because they still got some fat on their back. Our cattle won't add growth. I mean, we ain't going to have the 120, 30 yearling eat peat. We're not going to add more size and growth. But we're going to put as many pounds on those calves with the least input as any cattle out there. And that will be proven. Well, we've just come through some really tough weather. And... Uh 
it's kind of a, a testimony to uh, Oldie's genetics that these cows are able to survive some pretty tough conditions. They're tough range cattle, and yet they're quiet and uh, pretty docile. Although Tim's knowledge and experience are the foundation of the company, Oldie Cattle is a family operation. His wife Trudy and son Jake are just as dedicated as Tim in getting the right genetics matched up with their customers. We continually have new customers. I visit a lot with, with a lot of customers on the phone daily, uh, trying to get them acquainted with our operation and, and what might help them in, in the genetic area. Customers that are looking for bang on their buck, um, they want the quality of something that's probably worth probably ten thousand dollars and want to pay you know three or thirty five hundred for it so that's kind of the, the uh, market we aim for the best compliment i get at our bull sale is people said tim i can't pick out the best one and soon you'll have the opportunity to bid on oldie genetics at the annual oldie production sale on april 15th you know we got the same thing you know it ain't, ain't uniquely different uh basically same sires as we've had. Uh, I just think we each year they're a little more uniform than they've ever been. I mean, I want people to not have to fight for those two or three best ones. In other words, they'll say, I don't have to bid on that one. I think there's a bull selling second from the end of the sale. It's just as good. Join Tim, Trudy, and Jake at the Livestock Commission Company in Marysville, Kansas on April 15th for the 29th annual Basic Black Bull and Female Sale. Click oldiecattle.com for a sale catalog or log on to superiorlivestock.com for more information. The sale will also be live on Superior Click to Bid. That's all the time we have today. To find out more about us, visit theamericanrancher.com or connect with us on Facebook. I'm Pam Minnick. For the entire American Rancher team, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Superior.